Well, good morning, everyone, on this fall Friday, September morning. It is good uh, to be with you this morning. I want to take a moment to thank Ruth Ellen for filling in for me last week. Connie and I, we were on the road and we were able to get a couple of days away in British Columbia, up in the mountains. And so I feel honored to be able to be back here. I never ever take this opportunity for granted to be with you. And if you're joining us, please let me know if if this is coming through or not. Hard to tell sometimes who's on the line when I'm doing this on my laptop. So, but I can tell there are a few. So thank you for joining us and uh, uh, for a cup of faith. I don't know how your day started today, but mine uh, didn't start so well. Got to the office early this morning like I normally do and uh, forgot my keys at home. And so headed back uh, to 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 get that done. So I'm excited for what I want to share with you this morning. I don't have an easy message for you today, but uh, I have one that I believe God has put on my heart for you. So thank you, Bethany, for joining us. Franny, thank you. Uh, Tracy, good to have you joining us this morning. I can't see everybody else and I can't get it on my phone. So I have to figure out what is the problem with that but anyway i am honored and want to get going with this uh with this devotional for you we are in we are in the psalms and uh, we are going to look at psalms 51 today it this is psalm david's confession after his sin with bathsheba the full story could be found in second samuel uh um Chapters 11 and 12. Good morning, Lori and Charlene. Good morning, uh, Sharon. Good morning. Good to have all of you joining us this this morning. Psalms 51. Now, Psalms 32 and Psalms 51 cover David's confession. That's what I want to talk to you about this morning. And when you read Psalms 32, you can get an idea about the length, how long he carried this in. It was probably for one year. And in that time, you hear him talking about how miserably physically he felt, emotionally, spiritually, and psychologically, how much it affected him, his family, and certain history can tell us how much it affected the nation. So now David does not come uh, clean. In fact, he is confronted. The prophet Nathan is instructed by God to go into the presence of the king and to confront him of his sin. It's helpful for us to remember that the most impressive confession in the Bible comes out of someone who didn't come forth on their own. It came from someone who is really busted, confronted, and only then was their confession. But when we read it, we come to understand this was a real confession. It was true and it was life changing for David. Confession is truly good for the soul. I think verses one and two really set the tone for this psalm. Let me read it to you. He says, be gracious. And that word in the Hebrew can also be interpreted as merciful to me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly for my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Now, it's worth noting that David, as the king of Israel, does not come before God uh, with any sense of entitlement or of any of the accomplishments that he has done. He comes solely to and confesses on the character of God. He says, God, I'm coming to you based on your loving kindness and your compassion. You know, many of us struggle to live out forgiveness uh, uh, because we tend to carry the guilt and shame. The reason for that is for some, we want to impress God with how truly sorry we are. We think we must show and we must convince God uh, uh, how regretful we are of our sins and to somehow deserve his forgiveness. But that's really prideful. We cannot earn God's forgiveness 
and we do not have to beg for it. Look at verse 3. He says, I know my transgressions, my sin is ever before me. Now, in the Hebrew, this would literally read, I am deeply, intimately acquainted with my sin, and my sin is ever before me. There's this sense in this confession of him saying, I get it. I get the depth of my sin. There's a difference between being sorry and confessing sin. Being sorry is really kind of an emotional reaction because there is this level of embarrassment and guilt, and we need to be sorry. But confession is more than that. It comes with this sense that this is wrong, I was wrong, no excuses, I'll take responsibility and take the necessary steps to ensure I don't repeat it. Look at verse 4. Against you, you only have sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified when you speak and blameless when you judge. Now, sin is always ultimately against God, but it is also against uh, the families and the people that we hurt. But what David's saying here is he is coming and measuring himself against God's standard. And he's taking the consequences. He's saying, my sin has consequences. He says, I, I, I know what I did, and I'm going to face the consequence, consequences of it. I think we think that once we confess our sin, God should push the clear button and all the consequences go away. But David is saying, I've sinned, sin has consequences, and now, by your grace and power, I'll deal with the consequences. That's really important for us to understand, that even though we have to deal with the consequences, our God is so gracious that we don't have to deal with those consequences alone. Verse 7, Purify me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Cleanse me, and I will be whiter than snow. So there's some imagery here. The hyssop was a tree and the branches and the leaves were kind of like uh, like feathers. So they were used like a paintbrush. So if you think about it, uh, the children of Israel and the Passover, when they were getting ready to leave Egypt, they had to put blood on the doorpost. A hyssop branch was used. And in their culture, when you had leprosy, you were taken out of the community and you were put into a special uh, place to live. When you were cleansed or when you were getting better, you would come before the priest and and the priest would take a hyssop, hyssop bush and dip it in, in this ceremonial clean water and, and you, he would wash you with it. And so the idea here is, is this idea of public cleansing. The second thing in the image is the idea of snow. Now, in the Middle East, uh, it's normally very dry and, and the ground is very uh, dirty. And on the higher elevations, they would have snow. And so it's just this, this, this total covering of all that is dirty, all that is that is covered with the whiteness of soul. So he's saying here that there's this public cleansing and that this sin is not seen anymore. Look at verse 10 to 12. Create in me a clean heart, God. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me a willing spirit. David is basically saying, God, I want to get back on track with you. I want to get on the right path. And the only way I can do it is I need your help. You see, only God can change our heart. We can't fix ourselves. God promises a new heart when we come to him. David also asked for steadfastness or strength to keep uh, not falling in the same trap. He also asks for his joy to be restored and his desires will be to please the Lord. You see, David's prayer is completely fulfilled in Jesus. So much of the Old Testament, so much of the Old Covenant and all the things that they had to do really was setting the stage of what Jesus will accomplish for all of us. So everything he requested, a new heart, the indwelling and 
permanent presence of Holy Spirit, steadfastness, joy, and new desire to please God. All of that is now fulfilled in Christ. Our salvation, it is powerful because it is absolutely complete in Christ. So confession for the believer should not be difficult. We don't have to carry the weight of it. We should not wait until we're confronted. Nothing is hidden from the Lord. He already knows everything about us. And our forgiveness has already been established. We do not have to come with fear or anxiety or anything like that. We are already forgiven. All of the things that he was asking for, it's already permanently given to us. So we bring our brokenness and we bring our sinfulness to our loving Heavenly Father through Jesus. We are promised in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins. So although we are forgiven, we still have to bring that sin. We still, for our own good, we need to bring it before the Lord. If we confess our sins, he is faithful. I love that. And just and will, not maybe, but will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. How do we know that he will forgive us? Well, in the Old Testament, they didn't have that guarantee. But in the New Testament, we have that. We have it in Christ. The finished work of Jesus on the cross has given to us the confidence that we will be, that we are already forgiven. And he will purify us. Well, James tells us that confession also brings healing in our lives. And he says that the way that this healing works and the way that confession works best is in the idea of community. So James chapter 5 verse 16 says, therefore confess your sins to each other. Yes, we need to confess our sins to God. But he says there's this, this depth of healing that comes into our life when we are willing to share and open our lives up with one another. So therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. Our sin and our brokenness was not something that we were meant to carry on our own. And the reason for that is my sin and my broke doesn't just affect me. That's a lie that the enemy gives and, and perpetrates into our life. Well, this is only affecting me. No, it affects all of the people around us. It affects our community. It affects our church. And that's why confession is so important for us. And pray for each other so that we may be healed. Are you carrying guilt and are you carrying shame? Today is your day to experience healing and freedom by confessing your sins and brokenness. You know, we don't hear a lot about confession anymore. But I really believe in this day and age that we're living in, as God's people, we carry too much. We need to learn to confess our sins to the Lord and to each other. Let me pray for you today. There's a number of things that I'd like for us to, if you just stay on and as we pray together, we're gonna pray for our nation following this election. We wanna pray for our healthcare workers, our unity and spiritual renewal in our churches. And we wanna pray for those that are battling illness. We have a number of people in our church that are not well. Some are recovering from surgery, and I just want to take a moment and pray for them and pray for you this morning. I believe there's a special blessing for you today. Father, we thank you. We thank you that our nation is not in our hands. It is in your hands. And following this election, we just pray for a sense of unity, a sense of peace, a sense of coming together and working together. We pray for those that are elected. We pray for divine wisdom and grace and a sense of serving what is best for our nation versus what's best for an individual. Father, we pray over families that, that are struggling today with all kinds of different issues. We, do, we just speak peace into every home. We come against fear and anxiety. We bind those things in the name of Jesus. We pray for our healthcare workers today. We pray, Lord, for peace, 
health, strength in this stressful time that they're going through, Lord. I pray that you would just uh, give them what they need today, Lord, and the grace that they need to serve and to help others. We pray for our churches right across this nation, Lord. We pray for a keen sense of unity, and we pray for a spiritual renewal, Lord. We can't do this on our own. We need you. Pray for each one of you. You would touch us by your spirit, Lord. We pray for many that are battling illnesses at our church. We pray for healing. We pray for your grace that is sufficient for them. We pray for a speedy recovery. Today, Lord, on this day as you've taught us about confession, we just pray that our hearts would be open to you and that we would not carry our guilt and our shame any longer. Bless your people today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you again, all of you, for joining us. Uh, we got a great weekend planned for you, Saturday nights and Sunday morning services. Uh, if you are unable to join us in person, please join us online. And like everything we do, you know, if it's been a blessing to you, why don't you share it with someone uh, today? God bless you. We love you very, very much. Have an amazing day.